this feels good. Come to the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. Was anything moved from when you came here yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove, and you know Frank. Somebody should have been left here. Oh, yesterday, when I sent Frank to Moore Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew, I knew he could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself. Mr. Hale, tell just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I, we, we started a town with a load of potatoes. We come up the road from my place, and as we got here, I said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to him about it once before, but he, he put me off saying, folks talk too much anyway, and all he asks is peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talk himself, but I thought maybe if I go up to the house and talk about it before his wife, or... but I told Harry I didn't know his, what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Well, I do want to talk about that later, but tell me just what happened when you came to the house yesterday. Well, I, I didn't see or hear anything. I knocked on the door and still it was all quiet inside. Well, I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock, so I knocked again and I thought I heard someone say, come in. I wasn't sure, I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door, this door, and there in that rocker sat Miss Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of pleating it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. What do you mean, queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next and all done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Well, I don't think she minded one way or the other. She didn't really pay much attention. I said, how do, Miss Ride? It's cold, ain't it? She says, is it? And just kind of went on pleating at her apron. Well, I was surprised she didn't ask me to come over to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I come to see John. And she laughed. I guess you'd call it a laugh. Well, I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said, kind of shocked. Can I see John? No, says she. Kind of dull like. Wayne home? Yes, yeah, she said, he's home. Well, why, why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, she said. Well, dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Well, I said, where is he? And she pointed upstairs like that. Well, I got the idea of going up there, so I, I walked from there to here, and I said, well, what did he die of? She said he died of a rope around his neck. And just kept pleating that apron. I went out and called Harry. I, I thought I might need help. We went up there, and there he was, lying. I'd like for you to go upstairs and point out just what you saw yesterday. And just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, the first thing I thought is to get that rope off. It looked, ugh. but Harry, he went up to him and said, no, he's dead, all right. We better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs and she was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked? No, she said, unconcerned. Well, who did this, Miss Wright? Asked Harry. He said it all business-like and she stopped pleating over her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Well, weren't you sleeping in the bed next to him? Yes, she said, but I sleep on the inside. Someone slipped a rope around his neck, strangled him, and you didn't wake up, says Harry? I didn't wake up, she said after him. Well, we must have looked as, as though we didn't know how that could be, for after a minute she said, I sleep sound. 
Well, Harriet was going to ask her more questions, but I said, maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harriet went fast as he could down to River's place where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew you have gone for the coroner? Well, she moved from that chair there to this one over here. Sat there with her hands clasped and looking down. Well, I got the idea I ought to make some conversation, so I, I said, uh, come to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. And at that, she started to laugh. And then she stopped and looked at me, scared. I don't know, maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say that it was. But soon Harry came back, then Dr. Floyd, then you, Mr. Peters. And well, I, I guess that's all I know that you don't. Well, let's go upstairs first and then out to the barn and see just what happened. And you're convinced there's nothing in the, ki in the kitchen that could point to any motive. Nothing here but kitchen things. Here's a mess. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Well, can you beat the women held for murder and worrying about a preserves? I guess before she's through, she'll have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, what would we do without the ladies? Ugh, dirty towel. Wasn't much of a housekeeper, was she, ladies? <laughs> There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. There are other Dixon County farmhouses that don't have such towels. <laughs> Those towels get dirty awful quick, and men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. You and Miss Wright were neighbors. Were you friends? I've not seen much of her of late years. I, I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, and then... Yeah? It weren't a cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I wouldn't say she had the home-making instinct. I don't know as Wright had either. Oh, you mean they didn't get on very well? I don't mean anything. I don't think a place be any cheerfuler for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk about that a little later. I'd like to get the lay of things upstairs now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was taking some clothes for, you know, and a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters, and keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. I'd hate to have men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right. I wish that deputy sheriff had came in here to put the fire on and got a little of this on as well. I wish I'd thought of that sooner. It seems mean to talk about her not having things all slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had bread set. Oh, it's, it's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if there's anything left. I... Yes, it's... I, I believe there's some. Just, just one. I declare this is the only one. She'll feel awful bad about all of her work in that hot weather. I remember the day I put my cherries up last summer. Well, I must get the things from the front closet. Are you coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You can help me carry them. My, it's cold in there. Right was close. I suppose that's why she kept so much to herself. She probably felt as she couldn't do her part. She wasn't even a part of the ladies' aid. But then you don't enjoy doing things much when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster. One of the town girls singing in the choir. Oh, but that was 30 years ago. That all you was to take in?
She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She said it always hung there. With her little shawl, too. Yes. Here they are. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale? Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for her apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in a speech, and he'll make fun of her for saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they was slipping that rope around his neck. No, it's, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still. It's such a funny way to killing a man, bringing it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said, too. There was a gun in the house, and he says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming up that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. It's, it's wiped to here. I wonder how they're finding things upstairs. It seems kind of sneaking, locking her up in town and coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. She was piecing a quilt. It's a log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was going to to quilt it or, or just knot it? They wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> well, Frank's fire didn't do much upstairs, did it? I guess let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know, is there anything so strange? Are taking up our time with the little things as they're looking for evidence? What I don't see is it's anything to laugh about. Of course, they've got awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this one. This here? This is the one she was working on. Look at the sewing. All the rest of it's been so nice and even, and this one, it's, it's all over the place. Why, it looks as if she didn't even know what she was about. Oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very good. Bad sewing always made me fidgety. I don't think we ought to touch things. Oh, I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find some paper and string. Oh, in, in that drawer, maybe. Why, there's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Well, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here in so long. There was a man around last year selling canaries for cheap. She might have taken one. She used to sing real pretty herself. Why, seems funny to think of a bird here. But she must have had one or else why would there be a cage? I wonder what happened to it. Maybe the cat got it. No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that thing some people have about cats. Being afraid of them, I mean. You see, my cat got in her room once, and she was real upset, and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Well, look at the door. It's broke. When hinges pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they were to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It'd be awful lonesome for me here. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I wish, Mrs. Peters. 
I wish I'd come over more often when she was here. I... I wish I had. But you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale, with your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't cheerful, and that's why I ought to have come. I've never liked this place. <laughs> Maybe because it's down in a hollow, and you can't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place, and always was. I wish I'd come to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. You mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children, it makes less work, but it makes a quiet house and ride out to work all day and no company when he did come home. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. And they say he was a good man. Yes. Good. He didn't drink. And he kept his word as well as most, I guess, and he paid his debts, but he was a hard man. Just to pass the time of day with him, it's like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have liked a bird. But what do you suppose went with it? No, oh, I don't know. Unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her? Not till they brought her yesterday. She, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but timid and kind of fluttery. How she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Pierce, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Why, well, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, now could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in there, and her things. Well, here's some blue. I, I expect this has some of her sewing things in it. What a pretty box. It's like something that somebody would give to you. Maybe her scissors are in here. There's, there's something wrapped in this piece of silk. Why, that isn't her scissors. Why, Mrs. Peters, it's... It's the bird. Oh, Mrs. Peters, look at it. Look at its neck. It's, it's all other side to. Somebody wrung its neck. Well, ladies, have you decided if she was going to quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to knot it. That, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the cat got it. There is a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. Hmm. There's no sign of anyone coming in from the outside. It was their own rope. Let's go upstairs again and go over it piece by piece. She liked the bird. She was gonna bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, well, there was a boy who took a hatchet and before my eyes and before I could get there. If they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem, never to have had any children. No, Wright wouldn't like a bird, a thing that sang. She used to sing. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing that was done here that night. Killing a man like that, slipping a rope around his neck and that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him? We don't know who killed him. We don't know. 
If there'd been years and years of nothing, and then a pretty bird to sing to you, it would be awful still after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homestead in Dakota, my, my first baby, after he died, after he was just two years old, and me with no other then. How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for evidence? I know what stillness is. But Mrs. Hale, the law has got to punish crime. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and she stood in the choir and sang. I wish I'd come to see her more often. That was a crime. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her, her fruits are gone. Tell her they ain't. Tell her they're, they're all right and, and take that in to prove it to her. She may never know whether they were broke or not. My, it's a good thing the men couldn't hear us, wouldn't they laugh, getting stirred up over a little thing like a, a dead canary, as if that could have anything to do with, oh, with, wouldn't they just laugh? Maybe they would, or maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear, except a reason for doing it. But you know, juries when it comes to women. If there's some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with all the strange way of doing it. Okay, I got the team out here. Sure is cold. I'm going to stay here while by myself. You can send Frank out for me, can't you? I just want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied we can't do better. Do you want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take in? They don't look like very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. Miss Peters doesn't need supervising. A sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Miss Peters? Not just that way. Married to the law. I just want you to come in here a minute, George. We got to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Well, Henry, at least we found out she wasn't going to quilt it. She was going to, what do you call it, ladies? We call it, not it, Mr. Henderson. <laughs>